Last night, one of my Patreon subscribers had some issues with something that they were trying to do. So I figured that um, it would be a good time to record a video to show you guys how to use layer comps in Photoshop. All right, I already put this file together just to make this go a little bit quicker. Basically, what the person was trying to do was create several different profile images of people from a team, basically. So they all have different photos, they all have different names, but the template of the file was the same for everybody. So I went ahead and put together this image here with these abstract shapes and names here over this profile photo. So if we look at my layers here, you can see that I have three more photos of different people. So basically what we're gonna do here is create a text layer for each one of these people and their names that I made up and gave to them. So here we have, I already have Robin Ellis. So let's go ahead and All of these names now have their own text layers that I just duplicated from this original Robin Ellis. So now we have a photo for each person and a title for each person, but the elements and shapes are going to remain the same. So if you were doing this for your own project and you had like a company logo or, you know, something like a banner or anything that stayed the same on each one of these photos. This is really perfect for that, especially if it's built with a lot of layers because you don't have to duplicate those layers for each one or create a new Photoshop file for each one of these profile pics that is essentially the same. I already have my layer comps window open here, but you can just go to window, make sure the layer comps is checked and you'll see this pop up here. Basically what a layer comp is going to do is allow you to save the state of your file based on what layers you have visible at the time. This Robin Ellis one is already completed, so I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and click on this plus button or creating a new layer comp. I'm gonna go ahead and name it Robin. And you can see that I have all of these items here checked. I don't think the layer comp selection for smart objects really, it doesn't do what it sounds like it's gonna do, but Visibility, position, and appearance are all good things to have checked. So now this Robin Ellis uh, profile layout is set up as its own layer comp. So now I'm gonna turn her photo and her name off. I'm going to turn on the photo and name for Owen. I'm going to come up here and you can see that the visibility icon on Robin's uh, layer comp has been turned off. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one and call it Owen and you'll see that it's been turned on for Owen. And if I were to click onto the visibility um, of this layer comp for Robin, you'll see that all of her layers turn back on. If you click back on Owen, you'll see it does the same for him. So let's just do that for the others. All right, so now when I click through the visibility icons on these layer comps, you can see that each one of these is now its own layer comp. It'll set the state back to visible when you click on it and the other ones will turn off automatically. Super, super great tool for this. But the best part is that now all you have to do is go to file and export, select layer comps files and you get this little pop up here. Now I already have this folder here called profile photos. I'm gonna click open. And this prefix box here is really great if you need to maybe add a company name or something to label all of these files so you can find them easily, so you can send them to your client or whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and choose JPEG and click run. And hopefully it's a success. And now if I open up my file, if I open up my folder with my profile photos, you can see that it's created a JPEG for each one of those layer comp states. So this is a really, really great tool and it makes exporting different versions of the same Photoshop file super easy and super quick. Now I'm gonna show you one other example of how I use this when I'm working with t-shirts. All right, so this is a comp file that I have set up for t-shirt design. So this is basically what I would use at my past jobs when I needed to make like a Superman logo 
in 10 different colors and put them in the catalog. And you know, it's basically the same Superman logo or it's like a dark version of it and a light version of it. And I just need to comp it up on a bunch of different color blanks. So basically I have three layer comps going right here, but there are two different designs. So I have this roots group here, but what I really wanna work in today is this roots picnic design. So the t-shirt is mocked up in two different colors. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this roots group layer comp as well as this roots group art file. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how this is set up. Hi, Barry, you awake? Go eat some food. Okay, basically right now what I have is my shading folder and some background elements, shadows, whatnot. But I have an art folder and I have a body colors folder. So there's a ton of body colors that I have saved in here. And my art files are individual. So right now I have a white ink version of this, which is what's visible. And I have a black ink version of this, which as you can see, does not look good on this black t-shirt. So what I'm going to do is basically choose which version I want visible on which background color. So obviously I want this white one on this black background. So here, let's go ahead and delete both of these layer comps that already exist. So let's say I have white ink, black shirt. That's shirt number one. Let's call it black T and click OK. So now I have my black one. So now let's turn the black ink on, turn the white ink off, turn the white shirt on, make a new layer comp, call it white. And now I can switch back and forth between my black and white super easily. All right, so let's say I also want that white ink to print on a navy shirt. So make sure my navy layer is on, click new, call it navy T. And let's say I also want, ooh, how about that tie dye with this black ink version. We'll create a new layer comp, call it tie dye. And let's make one more for posterity. White ink on a forest green, no, olive green. Create a new layer comp, call it olive, click OK. So now when I go back and click through my layer comps, you'll see that each one of these individual things has been created. Now you could also add in more um, designs. So if I was just creating this for the roots today and I also had other artwork, I could easily bring in, you know, a basic roots logo, throw it on a t-shirt, make its own colors, whatever. I can just do an unlimited amount of these layer comps. And then all I have to do is go to export and select layer comps to files. I'm gonna put it in that same profile photos folder just because I'm gonna call this one the roots. I'm gonna click run. And it's gonna take a little bit longer since I have more layer comps in this one and more layers in general in this template. But once it's done, we're all good. Let's go to our folder here and you can see all of these JPEGs have been made from each individual layer comp in all of the states that I selected. All right, so there you go. Layer comps are a very good way to speed up your workflow and help you save a little bit of space on your computer too, because if you had five different PSD files with all of these layers, so I highly recommend using the layer comp method whenever you're exporting multiple versions of the same Photoshop file. Like I said at the beginning, this was a request from somebody who subscribes to my Patreon. This is what you can expect from that. It's really easy to reach out to me, ask me some troubleshooting questions, or give me a suggestion on a video and tutorial you wanna see, and I can put it together and really go through these things step by step to help you out. So please go subscribe to my Patreon page. For as low as $5 a month, you can get access to all of my fonts immediately and direct access to communicate with me to request these videos. Please make sure that you are subscribing on my YouTube channel if that's where you're watching this. And also follow me on Instagram. It's just at Nick Q. All right. Well, thank you guys for checking this out and I'll catch you on the next one.